This week at Interior, Secretary Jewell joined BLM Director Neil Cornsey, U.S. Senator Harry Reid, Congresswoman Dina Titus, and local community officials at the Las Vegas Springs Preserve to celebrate the new Basin and Range National Monument, a stunning array of mountain ranges and valleys in southern Nevada. The monument sits on 704,000 acres of rugged rangeland and mountains, about two hours from downtown Las Vegas. The area is emblematic of the stark beauty that characterizes the American West and will now be part of a system of protected spectacular landscapes managed by the Interior's Bureau of Land Management. President Obama declared the National Monument designation in July as part of a continued effort to protect the nation's significant outdoor spaces for the benefit of future generations. And in California, leadership from the Bureau of Land Management, the U.S. Forest Service, and nonprofit Tuliomi joined together to observe the designation of Berryessa Snow Mountain Range and its remote wild landscapes and valleys as a national monument. President Obama designated the nearly 331,000 acres as a monument earlier this summer. Set between Sacramento and San Francisco, it's a place for recreation, adventure, and solitude in an increasingly urban Northern California setting while also serving as a wildlife corridor and a source for fresh water. President Obama hosts the 7th White House Tribal Nations Conference in Washington, D.C., November 5th. The annual conference provides leaders from 567 federally recognized tribes the opportunity to interact directly with high-level federal government officials and members of the White House Council on Native American Affairs. Each federally recognized tribe will be invited to send one representative to the conference. The event builds upon the president's commitment to strengthen the government-to-government -government relationship with Indian country and to improve the lives of American Indians and Alaska Natives, with an emphasis on increasing opportunity for Native youth. A new study in the ecological journal Ecosphere suggests Arctic mammals may face shrinking habitats from climate warming. The study, based on research from USGS, the Fish and Wildlife Service, and other institutions, examined genetic data over decades for 28 mammals indigenous to Alaska's tundra and boreal forest habitats. The study looks at how different mammal species are likely to respond to future climate warming. The study concludes that some of Alaska's mammal species may begin moving from the southern parts of the state to the state's current tundra environments. Places like the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge and the National Petroleum Reserve of Alaska may see an increase in mammal species, while forests to the south are more likely to lose some populations of mammal species. A letter of intent signed this week by the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement and Mexico's Agency for Industrial Safety and Environmental Protection of the Hydrocarbon Sector. The agreement pledges cooperation, coordination, and information sharing related to the development, oversight, and enforcement of safety and environmental regulations for development of offshore oil and gas. This week marks the third anniversary of Hurricane Sandy, the most destructive storm on the Atlantic coast and the second costliest storm in U.S. history. The hurricane affected 24 states, including the entire eastern seaboard from Florida to Maine and west across Appalachia to as far as Michigan and Wisconsin, leaving $71.4 billion damages in its wake. This week, Bureau of Ocean Energy Management Director Abigail Hopper traveled to Long Beach Island, New Jersey to observe progress made since Hurricane Sandy in shore and dune restoration. The project will restore 11 and a half miles of shoreline. Today, Interior and the entire federal government are applying the lessons learned from the hurricane to help communities become more resilient in the face of forceful hurricanes fueled by climate change. Visit doi.gov slash Hurricane Sandy to learn more. And this week, Patterson Great Falls National Historical Park in New Jersey hosted 35 immigrants from 10 countries taking their oath of U.S. citizenship. A heartfelt congratulations and welcome to all of our newest citizens. That's this week at Interior. <laughs>